price moves that we're seeing in markets today, most notably gold and the dollar. If you think about why these two would go up simultaneously, you come to the realization that it most likely isn't because the global financial system has a lot of confidence in the global economy moving forward, or they don't have a lot of confidence what is happening on a geopolitical level for obvious reasons. But if you see gold and the dollar going up at the same time, it means that there's a lot of uh, or there's an extreme lack of confidence. And as most of you know from watching my videos, the whole entire system that we have is propped up by confidence, faith. Uh, it's, it's all about counterparty risk or perceived counterparty risk. And if you perceive counterparty risk to be extremely high and getting higher, you're going to gravitate into things like gold and the dollar. Ironically, the dollar is a liability of someone else. So there is still counterparty risk there. But I think it's kind of a, a Pavlovian response because people need dollars to buy the things that go down in value, i.e. assets. So even though the dollar is someone else's liability, they still want to hold on to it because they know they can trade that liability for another liability, meaning a stock or let's say a house. Uh, that goes down in value significantly. So, uh, well, I guess the house can be a liability. It could be an asset, depending on the leverage, depending on a, a variety of things. But that stock is definitely uh, someone else's liability. That's for sure. And I would argue the house kind of is too, because um, of most people have a mortgage first and foremost, and then you never really own your home. Uh, it's always got a, a lien by. Uncle Sam, or at least your local government, first and foremost, try not paying your property taxes and then see if you own the home. <laughs> nope, you don't. But uh, you guys understand where I'm going with that. So let's go over to CNBC. And I want to also mention something that Josh just brought to my attention, that our good friends, Jeff Snyder and Emil Kalinowski just came out with a video saying that the repo fails are spiking as well. So... I mean, you look at what's happening to gold, what's happening to silver, what's happening to the dollar. You look at this uh, short squeeze that we just talked about with nickel. Uh, we look at the banks potentially having problems there. Uh, we see a flattening of the yield curve. We see the euro dollar futures market uh, inverting all the way, uh, or the inverting, the inversion getting worse, I should say. And then you combine that with now we have the repo fails spiking. So this is this is not good. This is the no bueno zone. <laughs> this is the definition of the no bueno zone. We are entering it right now. And like I was telling Josh and saying briefly on the last video, I just don't think these politicians understand what they're doing. They don't understand the knock on effects to just going in and saying, oh, yeah, we're going to sanction Russian oil or oh, yeah, uh, you know, 35% of the world's fertilizer. Yeah, we can live without that. No problem. Um, I'm not saying that they shouldn't sanction Russia, but I'm saying that I, I don't think they've thought through this. And I don't think even if they did think through it, they could conceptualize all of the systemic risk that is on the bank's balance sheets. And if we, if, we have to remember that if we sanction Russia, we are we are by definition sanctioning everyone that does business with Russia. And it turns out there might be a lot of banks that have done business or their balance sheets are predicated upon doing business with Russia. And they didn't see this one coming and they can't unwind these positions in a way that's, that's, uh, that's fast enough. And you combine that, with what Zoltan Posar was saying with a liquidity crunch and, and, and that leads to potentially banks going bust, uh, especially the European banks that were already just hanging on by a thread. So let's get into these price moves and you guys can check this out. The, the DXY almost at 100 
up over 99, 99.15. Look at this, just in the last five days. I mean, just gone straight up. Look at that move on the, I mean, look for, for the D, you guys know this from watching my videos and just paying attention and doing research yourself. It might not seem like a big deal from the DX for the DXY to go from 95, call it to almost a hundred in two or three weeks. But, but that is a massive move in the dollar, massive move. And then let's look at the price of oil today. Oil, 126. Closed the day yesterday at about 119. And I saw earlier it was very close to 130. Brent at 130. Gold, up $65 today. Today it's up. Sixty five dollars to two thousand sixty. What was two thousand sixty one dollars? Wow. So you've got gold going parabolic. You have the dollar going parabolic. You have the repo fails. Let's go over to this chart from Jeff and Emil. And this just came out it's this video. So I'm going to be watching this during lunch and hopefully uh well, not hopefully, I'll definitely do a video on it this afternoon. And uh, because, you know, it's not just these the, the repo spike that we see here. And Jeff uh, says that a lot of times these repo spikes correspond with fragility in the market or a lack of dollars, i.e. a lack of liquidity. Uh, what kind of like what uh, Zoltan was saying. But it's not just the fact that it's spiking right now, and you can see it right here. But and by the way, look at this. It's uh, so how bad is it? You say, well, there's times when it got a lot higher. Yeah, but look at when when the repo market blew up. We didn't even see that many fails when the repo market, or well, we did, but it's getting close to that level right now. And I would argue that it, that it's it's even worse because we've got so many other factors at play right now that could present this huge, huge tail risk that we talked about in the last video that, that we just can't see because we don't know the counterparty risk. We don't know how these, especially the European banks, what type of uh, systemic risk they have for the Russian banks being kicked off the Swiss system. And I know the Russian banks can get around that, but it it when, when you're this when these balance sheets of, of the banks are this highly levered and you do something to the price of energy, natural gas where it spikes what you know 20 30% when oil just goes from 90 just straight to 130. This <laughs> this doesn't just create cracks in the system. This is this could be the catalyst for the whole system imploding. And, and I guess what we're seeing with gold, dollar, and the, the repo chart here are is, is what we're seeing in real time are the cracks in the system starting to emerge. All right, guys, we'll leave it at that. We've definitely got to pay attention to these things. A, a, a lot going on. Uh, um, Josh just reminded me of, of what I've been saying about personal freedom and liberty since 2020, that Lenin quote, ironically enough, where there's decades that go by that nothing happens and weeks go by when decades happen. And I said at the beginning of 2022, you guys heard me say it right on this channel many times, that I thought that 2022, uh, that concept or that quote would play out not just with our personal freedom and liberty, but with macroeconomics. And boy, are, are, are we sure seeing that? Uh, I don't know if you want to call it a prediction, uh, but we're definitely seeing that idea play out right in front of our eyes. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon. As always, make sure that you're standing up for freedom, liberty, free market capitalism. We'll see you on the next video.